name is Zane Kamis, and my mission statement is to bring products and services to market that make people's lives better. It was a Saturday, a lot like today, but under very different circumstances. On this Saturday, a man rushed into a hospital. He very quickly found himself in an intensive care ward where he proceeded to spend the next two weeks. Two weeks that were full of medical consultations, decisions, CAT scans, a leg surgery, and yes, hospital food. At the end of these two weeks, the man left the hospital. But not because he was discharged, because he was never the patient. He was a family caregiver. He was a family caregiver that had slept in a chair beside a hospital bed for two weeks straight. Two weeks that were full of anxiety, stress, at some points relief, and no showers. This caregiver was my uncle, and the patient was my grandmother. My uncle is one of eight million caregivers in Canada. That means one out of five Canadians are caregivers, including probably many of us here today. And 20% of those caregivers are under the age of 24, prudent as we stand on a university campus. These caregivers shoulder a burden on behalf of all of us, an emotional burden, a social burden, and a financial burden. One caregiver I spoke to told me how she went through seeing her husband become paralyzed. Yet despite the fact that she lived just with him and had a paralyzed husband, she wasn't able to get the support that she needed at home and had to take care of him herself. She pushed for this support. She asked for this support. Yet, one day after her final phone call asking for more help, he passed away. Eight million Canadians today are caregivers. Yet, these eight million Canadians don't have the support that they need. Why? What puts us in a place where one in five Canadians don't have the support? Fundamentally, we don't support caregivers because we don't recognize the role they play. We see this if we just compare the role of a caregiver to the role of a mother. Most of us here could probably tell you mothers are entitled to maternity leave. Most of us could probably also tell you that for the first part of maternity leave, those mothers are entitled to EI benefits. Yet how many of us here today could tell us that family caregivers are entitled to 15 weeks of EI benefits? These caregivers don't know until they have to. And when we, as a whole, don't recognize caregivers, we lead to caregivers not recognizing themselves. Another family member I talked to told me about the journey that he's been through in caregiving for his mother. He told me how he cooks for her, he cleans for her, he provides financial support, and when she was in the hospital on short-term stay for two months, he went every single day to also provide her emotional support. Yet when I asked him, 
do you consider yourself a caregiver? He said, no. I'm just doing my duty as a son and giving back to the mother who gave everything for me. When we don't recognize caregivers as a whole, when caregivers don't recognize themselves, we then don't recognize the impacts on these caregivers' lives. Anthropologists would call this social network theory. The rest of us would call this caregivers have friends and family. And one parent I talked to told me about her life. She, like many parents today, leads a busy life. Her and her husband wake up in the morning, they get ready, they get the kids ready, they drive the kids to school, they pick them up after school, they take them to soccer practice or track practice or hockey practice, they bring them home, they shower them, they put them to bed, and at some point, they eat. And she told me the only time she gets to spend with her husband and her family are Saturday and Sunday. But her husband's mother has dementia. And every Sunday, he spends the day with his mother. She told me the impacts of having just one day a week with him had resulted in them growing distant and them putting a burden on their marriage, not to mention any effects on their kids. When we don't recognize caregivers, we don't support them. And when we don't recognize caregivers, we downplay the significant contribution they make on behalf of all of us. Caregivers have a significant impact on both society as a whole, but also on patient outcomes. One study showed that the involvement of caregivers with patients with dementia resulted in a delay in institutionalization and in death. Another study showed that the involvement of caregivers with patients that were veterans resulted in those patients being more satisfied with their level of care and having fewer depressive symptoms. When we don't recognize caregivers, we don't recognize their contribution. And even for the most cynical of us, this contribution is significant even from a material economic standpoint. If we look at doctors in Canada, doctors in Canada get paid $25 billion as a sum every year. Not bad. Caregivers are estimated to save the healthcare system $24 to $31 billion every year. Can you imagine what that number would be if we recognize the work that they did and valued it more highly. But this impact comes at a personal cost. These caregivers sacrifice their lives to do this on behalf of all of us. One lady I spoke to told me how she used to be a nurse. And in particular, she was a nurse when SARS broke out here in Canada. At the time, she had about 40 vacation days that she had banked. But this was also when her mother started needing more intensive caregiver support. She asked her employer if she could take her vacation days, her vacation days, not her caregiver leave from the province, not her caregiver leave from the federal government, but her vacation, her own personal time. And she was denied. She was forced into a situation where she had to choose between her job and her mother. She chose an early retirement. She is one of 500,000 Canadians that are forced out of our workforce every year because they take on these caregiver duties 
for society as a whole. 500,000 Canadians don't work, but the rest of them do, and they carry the burden of caregiving along with their daily lives. An impact that is estimated to cost $1.3 billion in productivity losses every year, impacting both the caregiver and the employer. So when I asked her, looking back, looking back at the 10 years that you've been caregiving, what can you tell me about the journey you've been through? And she told me a couple things. She told me that for her, caregiving is a full-time job. She told me how during the day when her mother's resting, she continually would go in to check up on her sometimes just to make sure, is she resting or did she pass away? She told me how every night she sleeps on a couch beside her mother just to make sure that if her mother needs anything during the night, she's there for her. And she told me how she cares for her, she provides emotional support, she provides the financial support, and she coordinates all these services. She said what she wants to see changed, and it was just two things. One, she wants to just be recognized for the work that she does. And two, she wants just some kind of financial contribution for this full-time job that she's taken on for free. And while it might sound glib to say, you know, of course, we can just throw money at the problem. Every dollar we spend on family caregivers gets returned to us multiple fold. A pilot study in Nova Scotia piloted giving family caregivers $400 a month. That's it, just $400 a month. But they found that for every dollar they spent, they saved the healthcare system $5, a 500% return on investment. If I could have that in my portfolio, I would. But what about that other point? She said she just wants to be recognized. Because when we start recognizing caregivers, we can start making the journey towards supporting and then advocating for them. So how do we begin this journey? Maybe we could start at a system level. Maybe our healthcare practitioners, those that are taking care of our sick, our frail, our elderly, maybe we could start with them. We've seen recently the advent of social prescriptions, doctors prescribing, exercise and walks in the park. Maybe we could train our family doctors to know more about family caregiver resources, such that for the 30% of patient visits that have a companion, the doctor could turn to that companion and say, maybe I could prescribe you an EI leave, or maybe I could tell you about other resources available for you, or maybe I could refer you even to a social worker who can help you navigate the system and what's available for you. But we all know we have an overburdened healthcare system. It's the reason we push so much on home care. As our hospitals get more busy and as long-term care homes have wait lists that are thousands of patients long, maybe we need to look further. Maybe we need to look at what each and every one of us can do. So what can we do? What can we do to start recognizing caregivers so that we can move towards supporting them? We talked about mothers. Expecting mothers probably get more advice than they could ever want, and probably some of it unsolicited. What if we made ourselves as a society as knowledgeable 
about the resources available for caregivers as we did for the resources available for mothers? What if we all knew about EI Leave? Or what if we all knew even more just about free resources that don't cost us anything that we can take advantage of today? What if we knew about online community groups that are dedicated to caregivers, like those on huddall.com? Or what if we knew about a free AI chatbot specifically designed to give emotional support to caregivers called a Lizbot that any of us in the audience here today could message right now on Facebook Messenger for free? What if we just made ourselves aware? What if we educated ourselves so that we can support these caregivers? Or what if we take an even simpler step. This journey begins with recognition. What if the next time we have a family member that's been visiting his grandmother every day for two months? What if we turn from the patient to the caregiver and just do the simplest thing and ask, how are you today? Family caregivers are the heroes of our healthcare system. Let's act like it. Thank you.